number one Iron Age booty daddy. Eric July and the team at the Ripiverse are getting ready to release Isum 2. I believe it's also coming out in a campaign format this time, to the best of my knowledge. And I would like to talk with all of you guys about my expectations for Isum 2 and the future of the Ripiverse and my interest in the Ripiverse. And before I go any further, guys, if you would do me a fantastic favor, I would love for you guys to like this video hit the subscribe button, and ring the notification bell if you guys like what I have to say here. Now, all of that being said, I think that I am probably going to make some people mad or, at the very least, just engage in a fan debate. That's right, because the Ripperverse is something that we can actually have fan debates on. My expectations for Isom 2 are rather low, to be perfectly honest. I will leave a link down in the description for my original review of Isom, and I am honestly, after I have thought about it, Isom has, well, it's soured over time for me. And the more that I've thought about it, and also had conversations with other people in my community who are very excited about Isom, the more I realize that there are two critical things in Isom that well, I'm just not sure about. The first thing is that I never really felt that Isom was written as a character that I could have any sort of emotional investment in. Um, I, I don't really like his motivations in the book. I think Avery uh, is just, I, I, I don't know, he's just not my type of character. I, 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 don't, I don't know what else to say. I, I feel that uh, Avery should have probably been I don't know, uh, even just a little bit interested or more emotionally invested in trying to track this girl down. Uh, but to be perfectly honest, it was just treated as he was doing it as a favor for his sister. And then his motivation changed from a favor for his sister to going back and, you know, getting his pride back or, or, or standing up for his pride. I don't necessarily have an issue with any of those story beats to be perfectly honest i've seen them done and i've seen them done very well in different stories i think my issue is that the subject matter of the whole reason he's doing this favor for his sister is this young girl that who is i guess a, a friend of the family and she's possibly in dire straits or needs help and we find out in the book that i mean there's obviously some manipulation going on there right like there's absolutely some manipulation desperation we can speculate about what her motivations are but i never saw isom care about another human life possibly being in trouble and i really think that that was one of the biggest things that that got to me is that I never saw Isom care about a human being beyond just a favor that his sister asked him to do. I've thought long and hard about this, and I've actually thought about doing this video for the last two months. But to be perfectly honest, I my channel has grown because of the Ripiverse. So it's one of those things, it's like, well, if I come out with this video, does my audience leave? Does my audience hang out? What do they do? Like, I, I've actually not done this video because I, I I've been kind of afraid to do it. I, I I I love doing this. This is fantastic. The community that has built around this channel has been amazing. And so it's been tough for me to figure out how exactly to to explain this to you guys and not sound like just one of those other a-holes online that's just like, well, the Ripperbert. No, I was very excited for it. The other, the, and, and before I get into the conclusion of this, and by the way, I am still committed to buying items two and three, and I will get into that here in a few. But the other thing that I really couldn't jive with was Darren Fontano, the kind of the villain of the first book. Now, Darren Fontano was introduced to us as a shot caller, the guy who basically runs Flores Park, Texas. Uh, but that interaction that he had with Isom was all well and good up until he started talking about uh, what I refer to reductively, and I say this because it's just my personality, the mommy and daddy issues. You know, how Avery had a better family than he did and all that. And, and here's the thing is I've thought about this. I don't actually mind the villain saying that stuff but just not on first introduction. Personally, I think that that conversation, him saying those things to Avery, were 
better left to maybe like the penultimate fight or the ultimate fight between the two. You know, Avery, you know, and Avery and Darren, they're fighting it out. They're duking it out. And Darren's laying on the floor while Isom's getting ready to walk out of the door to go meet the next challenge or the bigger challenge. And, um, well, Darren then says, you had a good family. You had all this stuff. And you got to get out while I had to stay behind. I actually think that that would have been a great emotional payoff. And maybe that will still happen. And honestly, if it did still happen, I think it would still work because it would change the emotional tone, right? He was first talking about him being angry about it. And then, and so maybe those things can happen. But Darren Fontana was a shot caller. I've never been introduced to a shot caller in storytelling who came out talking about mommy and daddy issues right off the bat. And I, again, I say that reductively. You guys understand what I'm saying. I'm not taking shots here. Ultimately, the things that I took out of Isom were actually the characters that you met in the bar, which I have uh, Lillian uh, Ronish up here. I have the cards up here. And Norfrica. Those are the characters that I'm most interested in. There was a little bit of mystery there. There was a little bit of intrigue. We've got some villains. We've got some new potential heroes that are potentially demigods. And all of that seemed very interesting to me. But I feel like with the book's title, and I'll just hold it up here, but I feel like with the book's title being Isom, I feel like I should have been more invested in Isom. And people say, well, but he does care about people. He cares about his sister and his niece. It's like, well, yeah, no, no, of course he does, right? I mean, you, well, you'd be a grade A a-hole if you didn't care about your sister and your niece. But to really be ambivalent towards another human being, I don't know, it just, and maybe he's not, I don't know. But this leads me into my next point. Because there are still things here that I don't know about, and my enthusiasm for this was peak, I am still committed to buying Isom 2 and Isom 3. Who said, well, if you didn't like the first book, why would you buy it? Well, I've always told people when I'm trying to get them into a television show or, just, you know, mostly television shows, um, hey, guys, if you... Uh, uh, Give it three episodes. I always tell everybody, give it three episodes, right? I really love this show. I think it's awesome. Give it three episodes. If by the third episode, you're just like, nah, it's not my thing. Hey, it's not your thing, right? And so what kind of hypocrite would I be if Eric July says, hey, man, this is part of a three arc story and there's three episodes to it, right? Three About 300 pages, three episodes to it. So give it until the end of the third episode and, and see if you like it. Now... This is why I have my trepidations for Isom 2 is that the, and, and, and I don't know what greater storytelling he's going for in Isom 2, but I really, really do hope that there is something that gets me invested in Isom or something that gets me invested more in Eric July's writing because I am committed to Isom 2 and Isom 3, period. It is a fair shake to say he has this whole story arc planned and to basically say, nah, I'm out after only reading a third of the story, and maybe I don't understand the story, and that's a very good possibility. I feel that it wouldn't be a fair shake if I didn't buy the others. However, that being said, I do feel that if I don't jive with Eric July's writing and his writing style and kind of his vision for Isom, that I'm not really gonna take the chance on other Ripaverse books. And the reason being is because, I mean, not everybody in the world is flush with, cast, flush with cash. I know I most certainly am not. And there are a lot of other projects out there that I'd like to back. And $35 for an ISIM book is two projects for some other guys that are much smaller than Eric July. And I am weighing the pros and cons of all of this. And I am trying to figure out exactly how to, to go about this and describe to people like, that I, I had a hard time with this. I was doing theory videos and 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 and, and, and reading the cards and and I, I mean I bought the cards. My signed cover A is over here, next to the 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 document archives. So guys, let me know what you think down below. I mean, I don't think that I'm alone in this, but as somebody who built his channel off of the Ripperverse, the excitement for the Ripperverse. This is a hard video to do. This is hard to come out to fans of the Ripperverse. And I know there are many of you and say, 
I have problems with the book, and I, I don't think that, I don't know, maybe it's not my thing. Maybe just Eric July's writing isn't my thing. And that's really, that doesn't mean I'm gonna unsubscribe from his channel or anything. I love the guy to death. I, I watch many of his videos. The guy's educated me a lot on economics and places to look and, and books to read and, and, and policies that have been like, I really like him for how he kind of digs into the culture through more of the economic and the political stuff. I'm not gonna unsubscribe from Eric July. But I will say this to end the video, at least on a funny note, at least on a funny note, guys, Isom wasn't the self-insert. It's Sakari. He's a black dude in a metal band, which we've never seen before. <laughs> oh, but ladies and gentlemen, let me know what you think. No, actually, the self-insert would probably be the white dude in the metal band. Huh. Ladies and gentlemen, let me know what you guys think about my thoughts here. It's time to have a fan debate, guys. Prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. Tell me I missed something. I'll go back and I'll read the book. And actually, the way that I'm going to do this is I will pick up Isom. When I get Isom 2, I'm going to pick up Isom 1. I'm going to start at the beginning of the story, read that again, then open up Isom 2, then read that again. Or then read that for the first time. Because I feel like that's the best thing that I can do. But guys, let me know what you guys think about this video. I've been nervous to do this for several months because I've had these thoughts for several months and I can't shake them. But I do, regardless of whether or not I continue with the Ripperverse, because of maybe I just, I jive differently. I do hope that Eric July sees as much success as he has. And I hope he doubles and triples it. Because he is offering something out there to people. He is offering escapism. And that's not something that we've been offered for for a long time. So ladies and gentlemen, let me know what you think down in the comments below. And as always, until next time, Cheers, everybody. Thank you all so much for checking out this video. And I would ask, beg, borrow, and steal just to get you guys to click the links down in the description below to join my Gilded server and my drinkwithcrazy.locals.com. Oh, and by the way, just in case you guys didn't know, I'm also over on Rumble as well. So click that link while you're down there. See you next time.